All right, friends, here we go. Welcome back to day six of Walking in Wisdom, where we cover a different chapter of Proverbs every day for the entire month of October 2020. So here we are in day six, and this day is dedicated to my little sister Emily because it contains her favorite verse from our childhood. Because every time we would go to our grandparents' house, they would have us memorize and recite a different verse from scripture to be excused from the dinner table, which is a really great way to have God's word in our heart and on our tongues, just like Solomon is encouraging his son in verses 20 to 24. He says, My son, keep your father's commandments and forsake not your mother's teaching. Bind them always on your heart and tie them around your neck. And when you walk, they will lead you. When you lie down, they will watch over you. And when you wake, they will talk with you. For the commandment is a lamp and the teaching a light. And the reproofs of discipline are the way of life to preserve you from the evil woman, from the smooth tongue of the adulteress. Note that wisdom is often contrasted by adultery. And where is the wisdom, the teaching, the commandments of the Father supposed to be? Well, Solomon says that we are to bind them on our heart always and tie them around your neck, and they will be with you when you walk, when you lie down, and when you wake. This reminds me of Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 to 9, where Moses is telling the people of Israel, after he's reminded them of the Ten Commandments, about when to talk about God's word. And he declares, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your mind and all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hands and they shall be a frontlet between your eyes and you shall write them on your doorposts and on of your house and on your gates. This means that there is no time in the day that God's commands and God's word and his promises aren't to be talked about. I'm supposed to say it all the time, everywhere we go. And these words, they are a light that will guide you, and they will be on your heart and on your lips. And the word of God energizes you and it motivates you to do good for your neighbors. Because, you know, Martin Luther would say, too, that God doesn't need your good works, but your neighbor does. God's word motivates us to be active and to do good things. So, so back to Emily's favorite verse, chapter 6, verse 6. It says, Go to the ant, you sluggard, and consider her ways and be wise. First, I think the word sluggard is wonderful and old-fashioned and lovely and hilarious. But what's even funnier is the study notes in the Lutheran Study Bible even give a colloquial equivalent of the word lazy bones. So I'm going to use that one for the rest of the time. So go to the ant, lazy bones, and consider her ways and be wise. Without having any chief or officer or ruler, she prepares her bread in summer and gathers her food in harvest. How long will you lie there, lazy bones? When will you get up from your sleep? Oh, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. And poverty will come upon you like a robber and want like an armed man. So what good is a lazy person when things need to get done? The ant doesn't have to be ordered or motivated by authority like a parent has to motivate a lazy child. The ant is a picture of motivation from within, a picture of wisdom. Unlike the work ethic of an ant, laziness works in increments. Just a little nap and I'll get to it later. These lame excuses, some that I'll admit I use too, they value present comfort at the risk of future problems. This laziness now has an effect for later, and eventually we could find ourselves unexpectedly poor if we don't work, almost as if we'd been robbed. But Christ is the motivation to be productive. Christ is a motivation to be honest and kind and giving and forgiving and to improve our neighbor's reputation instead of sowing discord. Bringing us back to the beginning of our chat here, the law of the Lord, the light on our path, it shows us not only our sins, but also their motivation and their consequences. 
So let's consider a thought, an action, or a word by asking, why am I doing this? Where could it take me? Can I do this in the name of the Lord? God hates sin so deeply that he sent his son to take away sin's powers, its curses, its eternal consequences. In Christ, we are forgiven and we are empowered to become his. We are empowered to overcome sin. In Christ, we are transformed from that lazy bones good for nothing. And we are made into God's precious, valuable sons and daughters. So stay wise, get to work, and I'll see you tomorrow with chapter 7. Have a great day. God bless. Oh, so you curious about the flower? Uh, Charlie gives me one of those every day, and she wants me to show it to everyone. So here you go. Charlie, I love you.